The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Technology's Cooking Experience. Hi everybody and welcome to today's episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience brought to you by Eastlink Community TV and our friends at Seasons Pharmacy and Culinary on Lawrence Street. Today's subject is party flavors. You got somebody coming to your house you don't really want to feed them a full meal because it's like three o'clock and or you have kids coming after school because it's soccer practice and you're like okay I want to feed them but I don't want to crack out the barbecue you, this is what you're gonna do. I'm all about the little sandwiches. My kid, my kids' friends, they all love these things. So it's a good for adults and great for kids. We're gonna start off by my ingredients today. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna make. So my ingredients today is a fresh loaf of sourdough bread that was made by hazel and rosemary delicious. I've got some white tortilla wheat wraps and I've got some mini butter uh, croissants. I've got some cucumbers. I've got some beautiful capiscation spreadable cream, uh, goat cheese and we've got some Italian tuna, some roasted pepper hummus and some uh, imitation crab that I'm telling you you're going to love and want to eat this stuff all the time. So for my first sandwich, let's get started with the sourdough bread. Sourdough bread is good for you for many different reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is it's a lot easier to digest, you know? Oh, have you noticed my cutting board? This is a bread cutting board. And you're like, oh, I can just cut it on anything. You can, but you might want to invest in one of these. So look, this thing is made out of bamboo and it comes apart. It's so much easier for cleaning and you can just leave your bread on there. You know what I mean? Don't have to put it in a bag and wrap everything up. Sourdough is good dried out just a little bit. So I'm not gonna use the butt of the sourdough because the butt of the sourdough is hard to manipulate. Most people like eating it just with butter or jam. So the sandwich that I'm making now is a open-faced cucumber and goat cheese uh, sandwich. Let me make it just a little bit thicker. So the one thing about sourdough bread is that the crust is always a little more tougher than the regular white bread, but the inside, like look, it's so soft and, and soft mean, translates to chewy, what that I love. Okay, nice and simple, I'll put this bread here. Nice and simple, this is the simplest sandwich you're ever gonna make. So I'm gonna take my Capus case and cheese here. I'm going to get a knife. So the bread's got a nice chewy outside and a soft inside. And we're gonna start off by spreading out a little bit of this spreadable uh, goat cheese. Now, if you don't like goat cheese, that's fine. There's many different things that you can use. Um, you can use cream cheese, the flavored kind or not the flavored kind. Uh, you can use labna. You can use mm, hummus, I guess. <clears throat> but this one is just best tasted with a cheese spread. That brings out the flavor of the cucumbers. And don't be cheap, eh? Like, you're making a nice sandwich, so what you want to do is, you want it to be like a really good flavor bite. That's the, the, the line we're gonna use today, flavor bite. So, you take your two sandwiches. I prefer the mini cucumber versus the big cucumber, because the mini cucumber, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks cuter, and when things look cute, kids will eat it, no problem. So some nice, cute little slices, nothing too thick. 
You want it to be a little bit dainty. Slice up the whole cucumber. Don't go anything thicker than like, I don't know, knife, knife thick. You know what I mean? If it goes too thick, then it becomes a little awkward on your bread. So there we go. Just place them nice and fancy. If it looks good, it tastes good, and that's what kids love. Right? Look at that. Look at that. Who wouldn't want to eat this? So delicious. Okay, we're going to put this on like this. We're gonna move my little cucumbers over here. Now, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little bit of dry dill. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, look at that. We gotta sprinkle on a little bit of rock salt because my kid loves crunching on rock salt. And I'm sure every child loves crunching on rock salt, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut these in little triangles. Okay, just put them back down. And I'm gonna put them on a fancy little piece of wood here that we call a charcuterie board or a service board. And when it's all ready, we bring it out to our kids. Something so simple, but I'm telling you, it's quick. It's nutritious, the kids love it. We can just serve it to them and they will be happy. So, moving on, I'm going to, and on our, say, before I say moving on, what I do is I'll take a board like this with my crackers, sorry, with my sandwiches and I'll put like some, some of this and I'll put some regular cucumbers on there with some pickles. You know, put on a little bit of red pepper. Anything that I can get people to eat. Most people won't just go and cut up a red, a red pepper and just be like, oh, I'm gonna eat a red pepper, you know? But if you have it cut up in front of them, they'll eat this. Give something like this to people when they come into your house just to sit there and nosh with you while you're eating and I'm telling you, People will love this one. So this is just my little mini cucumber sandwich. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> Welcome back. And in this part, I'm gonna show you how to make the best, how to make fish taste amazing to kids and people who don't like fish. So the first one that I'm gonna work on is called my tuna sandwich. So what I did is, you can buy tuna in all different kinds of cans, but if you can get the ones that have flavors in them, this one is flavored by hot peppers. You know, everybody thinks they don't like spicy stuff until they try really good spicy stuff and they're like, oh, I really like that. So there we go, take it out of the can and drain out whatever liquid is in there. Now, no judgment if you wanna go with plain flavored in water, have at it, it's good for your heart. As long as you're eating the fish, I don't care. So when it's in here, I like to take my fork and I like to break it up. Cause it's a lot easier to do in the strainer because it gets out the extra waters and the extra oils in here. And that's just fantastic. Okay. So look at that, nice, fluffy. I got my little hot fish oil on the bottom, which I'm going to keep and put in my fridge and probably fry up a piece of fish in it. Okay, I'm gonna pick out the hot pepper just because. Now, <clears throat> what I like to do with my uh, tuna is I like to make it really good. So I'll, I like crunch, I like something that comes back. So we're gonna take a green onion, take off the top, pull off the first layer. I take off the bottoms just because you don't know who's touched them, what kind of stuff got in there, it's not worth it. Take your onion, cut, slice it down the middle so that it's not little rounds, you know? 
And then give it a nice choppy chop. Some people like to put celery in their tuna, and that's perfect, that's fine. Anything that has a crunch, anything that you're like, ooh, it's not always about flavor building, it's also about texture. And go all the way, okay? Like, take all the greens, too. A lot of people just think, I'm just going to use this green onion with the white, and then the rest, well, I'm just going to throw away. Don't do that. Don't do that. Everything in the green onion has a purpose. You can even cut the green onion to the base at the bottom, give it like half an inch, and you can get yourself, put it into a glass and re-root it. So it's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, so I got my green onion in there, some dill pickles for flavor. Uh, with that many, that much tuna, I'll use uh, three little dill pickles. Now these dill pickles were packed in obviously dill, but garlic, so it's got a little bit more flavor to it. It's nice small dice. We all remember the kid who went to school with tuna sandwich because we could all smell them. You know, it's all good. Okay, little dice in there. Throw that in there. Nice and simple look. It's taking me 30 seconds, we'll say. Okay. I'm a big fan of the white pepper. It's got the nicer, stronger flavor. And you don't have to use as much. A Little bit of salt in here, not too much. Don't go crazy because always remember your mayonnaise is salty, okay? And a little bit of dry dill because fish and dill go hand in hand. Boom. Get yourself some mayonnaise. Now, start off with a little squirt and then put a little bit more as you go. So here you're gonna put your mayonnaise in so that it's nice and pasty and not too, not too white, okay? You don't want it too white. That's our first mix. The next mix we're gonna make is a version of the Neptune salad that you can get at the grocery stores and stuff, but seriously, make your own. Make your own, because it's way better. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna start off with a bowl. Take your imitation crab. Is there a better one than the other ones? To be honest, I can't tell you. I like the ones that are in chunks, not the ones that are like, <clears throat> in big like long strips you see at the Chinese. No, just give it a quick chop, nothing. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. Cause you, you can shred it if you want to take the time, you can sit there and shred it. We'll just give it a nice chop. Cause once you move maneuver it with your fingers and stuff, you'll see that it'll fall apart and it'll be way easier to eat. Now the thing that I like the most about this imitation crab and what I like that my, my friends and my kid likes is that it's got like a little bit of a sweet flavor to it already, you know? And it doesn't, it's not too fishy and it doesn't smell too fishy. It's a big, it's a big win, it's a big win. Okay, nice rough chop. Then I take it off and then I kind of like, as I put it into my bowl, I just kind of like crumble it, like squish it in my fingers a little bit so that it kind of flakes apart from each other. And that's kind of what you want. You know, you want it to look like, like real. You want it to look real. You could do this with real crab. Hey, if you can afford it, my friend, have at it. I bet you'd be delicious. Now don't be afraid to be washing your hands all through this, okay guys? Just don't go in there. One of my biggest pet peeves is that people <clears throat> Uh, do a lot of cooking without washing their hands or their cutting boards. Now, Mama G, you're cutting everything on the same cutting board, <clears throat> excuse me, but you're not cleaning the cutting board in between. Everything that's cutting on this cutting board is going into the same bowl. Everything that this knife is touching is going into the same bowl. That is okay, don't freak out. Because at the end of the day, this and this is all the same. Now if I was doing two separate things, you wouldn't want to do it. So give it a nice small dice of the red. You want the red, uh, red pepper in there because it's gonna give it, like I said, a little bit of a crunch. Okay, and you don't want too much in there. Maybe a quarter, just to say like, ooh, look, that looks so good. 
Okay, just a little bit in there. I'm not even gonna use this one because I don't like it. We're gonna add a green onion in there. Now this is where you want the green onion to be like the little rounds because you want the little bit of resistance that's gonna be going <clears throat> with the crunch of the green onion. Okay, making sure to use it up all the way to the end. You want the green for the contrast in your little sandwich. Okay, not using that little bit at the end. Shove it in your bowl. Again, you're gonna wanna use your white pepper, especially with the crab. You want the white pepper because the black pepper will really stick out. And it'll, it'll, it's a little bit too strong for the flavor profile of the, of the crab. And some dill. If you have fresh dill or fresh parsley, this is where I would be using it as well. Remembering also to put in a little bit of salt. Don't go too much salt because you have salt in your mayonnaise. And there we go. We just add a little bit of mayonnaise to it. We'll mix it up. This one's okay to have a little bit more mayonnaise than the tuna because the tuna is packed in water. So what I'm just gonna do is just finish mixing this up and when we come back, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to stuff the croissants and we'll get our wraps done at the same time. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. So now you're gonna say, Mama G, how do I stuff a croissant? It's always gonna get through on the side. So instead of cutting it this way, like you're normally used to doing, as everyone does, I like to cut it on the top, spread it open a little bit, and take my fingers and push the insides over. All we're gonna do is just take a little bit of your mixture that you have here, which is delicious and ready to go and just shove it in, making sure that you're taking the fork and going on the inside of the croissant so that way it's like properly stuffed. There's nothing worse than having a sandwich that doesn't have enough stuff. You might as well not serve it. You might as well not serve it. So there, and then you can close it back up so nothing squishes out. It's delicious. Nice. Boom. Every bite is a surprise. Look at that, look at that. And now I'm gonna show you how to do my festive wraps. So these wraps I bring to Christmas parties, I bring to birthday parties, potlucks, all that kind of stuff. Because this is where it's the most easiest, the quickest to put together, and honestly, probably the most well-received. Take, start off with a larger wrap, don't do a smaller wrap. They're really hard to, to roll and to slice and there's a lot of waste, it's just not worth it. So I am a big fan of the roasted pepper, roasted red pepper hummus. You wanna put a nice thin layer. Don't do too thick because you're gonna have issues. It's not worth it. You know, this is good, nice and thin. You basically want to have enough uh, product on your sandwich, on your wrap, that uh, when you go to roll it, it squishes out to the side and it sticks everything together. Now, roasted red peppers goes really well with a red pepper. Nice and thin slices. You can do dicing, but when you go to do dicing, sometimes it just, the dice is too big or you know, just do some nice slices. This is a lot easier to wrap and to uh, slice. So not quite the middle, but I would say a third in at the edge of the third is where you wanna put your, your stuff. The other thing that goes really nice with red peppers is pickles. We'll do some little pickle slices. These ones, again, you wanna cut like a little like a little strip. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Sometimes I've taken peanut butter and put sliced bananas and I've done it that way as well. There we go, nice and simple. This one, very easy. 
You fold in your two sides and you stick them to the hummus so that they stick. You roll, you fold the first flap and you kind of look like an envelope and then you tuck it in and you just kind of keep twirling it so that it sticks. Look, see how the goo went to the end? We'll let that one sit for a second. Don't go and slice them right away. Let it sit, let the bread absorb the hummus so that it's a lot easier to stick together. The second one that we're gonna make that's quite popular is a cheese. So we'll go back to our beautiful, spreadable, capus casing goat cheese available here at Seasons Pharmacy. Nice thin layer. This is a sandwich, so I would use cream cheese, um, you know, at camp with my kids, and I would do the same thing just with cream cheese. Then, apples. Nice thin layer of sliced apples. These are local Sudbury apples. They're delicious and sweet and juicy. Okay, some nice apples in there. Then some toasted pecans, pecans, it depends how you pronounce the word, really. We'll put a little bit more in there. Put a little bit more in there. There we go, again, take the two sides, put them in, fold them in so they're nice and flat and that they stick like an envelope, stick, roll it out. Let it sit for a second. And then my third one, which is the most, you know, adult friendly, I would say, is a really thin layer of the cheese. Little bit of the hummus. Don't go crazy with the hummus because too much sauce is not good. We all know that. And some beautiful, locally grown yellow tomatoes. If you are a gardener, you know the tomato you grow is the way to go. Some nice thin layer of tomato. Try to do the smaller tomatoes, guys. It's a, it packs more power in your flavor. Green onion, because we all love green onion. Don't use the whole thing, because you're not gonna need the whole thing for one. Okay, salt, pepper. Do, 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 cause tomatoes and salt, come on, it's delicious. A little bit of pepper. Don't be afraid to season your wraps, okay? Don't be afraid to season anything. Even if you think, oh, it's too small, just do it, just do it. It's good. So, do your flaps, make your envelope, roll it up, boom. What's the saying? Now Bob's your uncle. Hi, Uncle Bob. So bring back my three. Now you can tell the difference that the, the, just how it handles itself, that the liquid got, the sauce got absorbed into the wrap. Nice and simple. Take a serrated knife, not a chef knife, because this is just a lot easier. Now I don't serve the end pieces. I just kind of, you know, eat them. But I would say finger thick. I want to thank you for joining me for today's episode of Mama G's. I want to thank Eastlink Community TV for offering me this opportunity to share my experiences with the community. But most of all, I'd like to thank my friends over at Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for being my sponsor for this awesome show. And my beautiful friend, Marise Godot, who makes my aprons. You can see her at the uh, Sudbury Farmer's Market.
You can also get Meredith Teller's bread, rosemary and hazel and rosemary at the market as well. And here's our finished products. Took no time at all to send to our parties and our kids. We've got our cucumber sandwiches, our festive wraps, and our stuffed croissants. Easy peasy and everybody's gonna love it.